Well, this is not a great development. Apple has removed Glenn Beck's podcast from the Apple Podcasts app. So you go into your Apple Podcasts app right now on your iPhone, on your MacBook, and his podcast, which was on the charts, he always ranked on the charts, which is not surprising given how popular his radio show is. It's gone. It's completely gone. And it's not exactly a mystery because Apple sent him a message notifying him that they were removing his podcast. This is, if we could bring this up on the screen, this is what he shared on on X. This is element 1B. This is the message from Apple they sent to Glenn Beck notifying him that his podcast would be removed. It just says, hello, we found an issue with your show, the Glenn Beck program, which must be resolved before it's available on Apple Podcasts. And then it says again, your show has been removed from Apple Podcasts, signed the Apple Podcasts team. And this is what Glenn Beck said when he, he, he released a video saying, okay, well, we followed their instructions and clicked on a link that was going to tell us what this problem was with our show. And this is what they found. Take a listen. Uh, hey, we're just uh, sitting here in my office and we're discussing something that we just saw um, here. Uh, this is from Apple. We found an issue with your show, the Glenn Beck program, which must be resolved before it's available on Apple Podcast. Your show's been removed from Apple Podcast from the Apple Podcast team. They sent us to uh, uh, sent us a link and said, for more details, go to the link. And the, the link only says, your show has been removed from Apple Podcasts. Well, we got that one, dummy. I, I mean, I cannot imagine what they are, what they're basing this one on. I mean, have we even had strikes? Nothing, right? This is crazy, crazy. Um, you need to uh, please retweet this and uh, start a campaign to Apple to say, put the podcast back on. This is absolutely uh, freedom of speech. There's nothing that we have said that would warrant any removal. Um, again, it's probably just a glitch, but it's amazing how we have to have a whole bunch of people point out the glitch before the glitch is found and it's put back. Um, Man, this is, uh, this is huge. It is huge. I think we expect, a lot of us expect to be censored on YouTube. A lot of us expect to be censored on Facebook. A lot of us expected to be censored on Twitter back when it was Twitter before Elon Musk bought it. We expect to be censored on different platforms, but Apple has been one that frankly, a lot of us have relied on as being as as being a platform of free speech. They never said it, but they didn't have a censorship regime. A lot of our shows have been safe on there. Oftentimes when we have to censor things on YouTube, the censor-free version of the show we put on audio on Apple Podcasts. So it's jarring to see this happening to Glenn Beck. Like of all people, Glenn Beck, what on earth did he say that that all of us aren't saying that would warrant him being kicked off this, this platform? I mean, I hope he's right. He was mocking the fact that, oh, maybe this is a glitch. Hopefully they send him an email and say, this was just an error. We've restored it. Forget about it. I hope that happens. But if it happens, it's still chilling. Because if that happens, it's only because so many of us spoke out in Glenn's defense and spoke out against Apple's censorship. It's not because they sent him that email by mistake. It's because they didn't anticipate the level of reaction that they would get from people. But this is, he's right. It is, it is big. It's almost to the point of election interference, right? Glenn talks about issues like the Biden family and ESG and the World Economic Forum and monetary policy, things that he challenges globalists. And specifically, he goes after Hunter Biden's criminal activities. And that makes a difference. We know that makes a difference in the outcome of an election. We know from 2020, we know that poll that Democrats said, what was it? 17% of Democrats who voted for Biden said that they would have reconsidered their vote had they known the Hunter Biden laptop was real. Of course, talking about Hunter Biden makes a difference. So how is this not election interference if you're shutting down a conservative podcast and not shutting down the liberal podcast counterpart? You are swaying the election in one way or the other. One of the things that the censorship regime does, and you can tell I feel very strongly about this because it's not only my livelihood, it's not only what I do, it's, it's our ability to be part of the self-governance of our country. If we're not allowed to speak, if we're going to be criminalized like Trump, 
for questioning fishy activities um, during a presidential election, if we are going to be banned from the one of the biggest podcast applications in the world because of what? Because you're criticizing the regime because you're blaming the globalists for their controlling activities because you're criticizing Biden, then we are not going to be active participants in the self-governance of our country. It's going to devolve into tyranny. And I don't say this to be hyperbolic. I say this because we are experiencing this happening. And the way that the censorship regime works is they target people specifically that they think the rest of the conservative movement or Republican Party won't defend. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that in just a second. But first, I want to talk to you about American Heart for Gold. Uh, Is it only me or do you also feel that our future is growing more insecure and uncertain by the day? I'm not trying to sound doom and gloom here. I'm just stating reality. We are paying less and are paying more and getting less because we're facing record high inflation, soaring interest rates, And what seems to be a looming recession, it's threatening to our businesses, our jobs, and to our retirement funds. In fact, even Fed Chair Powell warned us that we should brace for more pain. Not exactly sure what he meant by that, but it doesn't sound good. Fortunately, there is a way to secure your hard-earned nest egg, even in the face of this uncertainty. You can do what I did. You can call the only precious metals dealer I trust, American Hartford Gold. They make it simple and easy to protect your savings and retirement accounts with physical gold and silver. With one short phone call, they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside your IRA or 401k. And if you call them right now, they'll give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. So don't wait. Call them now. Call 866-781-7499. That's 866-781-7499 or text Liz to 65532. Again, the phone number is 866 786- 781-7499 or text Liz to 65532. So the strategy the censorship regime has used in the past, which I assume that they're using again because it has worked for them in the past, is they choose individuals to cancel or to deplatform that they think the rest of the conservative movement or the Republican Party won't defend. So the best example of this is Alex Jones. Alex Jones was banned from Twitter completely because many conservatives disagreed with what Alex Jones was saying at the time. This was at the time that he was talking about Sandy Hook and pretending that it was, or lying about it, saying that it was um, some kind of false flag attack, that it was done by the government or that these were actors, some, some abhorrent thing that he was saying, which most of us agreed was an abhorrent thing. And Twitter used that as a reason to ban him because they didn't they knew that you and I would not necessarily want to come to his defense because it would seem like we were defending the substance of what he said versus just defending his right to say it because it is nuanced. That's free speech. Now, there were some of us, myself included, who did come to Alex Jones's defense, not based on the substance of what he was saying, but based on his right to say abhorrent things. And this, this, this strategy that they've used to pick off the more extreme voices or the fringe characters, the fringe commentators, is their effort to move the Overton window. If they can manage to ban Alex Jones, if they could manage to ban Laura Loomer, if they could manage to ban Milo Yiannopoulos, if they could manage to ban even Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate, right? A lot of us heard about Andrew Tate for the first time uh, about a year and a half ago when Twitter banned Andrew Tate for some opinion that he had about the Me Too movement or accusing women of being partially to blame when they were sexually assaulted or some some offensive opinion of his. And a lot of conservatives were like, wow, do I defend this guy Like, because he has a right to say this? Or is it going to sound like I'm defending what he said? And so a lot of conservatives stayed quiet. But this is what the censorship regime does. They pick off the people expressing more extreme opinions, hoping that the rest of us will stay quiet because we don't want to be associated with the opinion itself. And unfortunately, it's worked really well in the past. Now, I'm not lumping Glenn Beck in with Alex Jones. I'm not comparing Glenn Beck to Milo Yiannopoulos and certainly not to Andrew Tate, but the perception that the left wants you to have of Glenn Beck is they want to pretend or portray him as a conspiracy theorist. Now, I don't think he's a conspiracy theorist. I think his book that he wrote with Justin Haskins, The Great Reset, is one of the most important books that's been written probably in the last decade. Glenn Beck was talking about ESG and the World Economic Forum, and corporate wokeism before anyone even knew what ESG stood for. And that is why the censorship regime is coming after him, because he's such an important, critical, ahead of his times voice on these issues. But at the same time, it allows them very easily to portray him as a conspiracy theorist. So what they're doing right now is they are attempting to move the Overton window, peeling off people that they consider to be on the edge, moving it closer and closer to us. 
us. That's right. So this is the second time this week that we've talked about what hap- something that's happening to somebody else. First, it was Trump, and now it's Glenn Beck. Not just being terrible and unfair and unjust and wrong because it's happening to them, but because it's the precursor to the same thing happening to us. And that was my reaction when I saw when I saw that Apple had removed Glenn Beck. I thought, wow, that really sucks for Glenn. I'm sorry to hear that. I immediately texted them and said, offered any help that I can give them to help rectify the situation. But at the same time, I also felt this, this chilling feeling. The chilling feeling like, well, if they're gonna come for Glenn, then they're definitely gonna come for us. This is part of our business structure. We're on Apple Podcasts. A lot of you right now are listening on Apple Podcasts. What happens? You can't help but think as a content creator, as a podcaster, as a commentator, what happens if we get kicked off of Apple Podcasts? Where's our audience gonna find us? Are we going to be silenced? And the answer to that is, I don't know. I don't know. We're not gonna stop talking. We're not gonna self-censor. What, what we can do is, I mean, the best way to hedge our bets against big tech is to not use big tech. So you can go to lizwheeler.com slash email, drop your email into my newsletter box so that we have that direct connection because then they can't sever us from each other even if they, you know, even if, if what they did to Glenn happens to us on Apple Podcasts. So go to lizwheeler.com slash email. It doesn't feel like a lot. It doesn't feel like enough of a defense against what's happening, but it is valuable. So uh, share Glenn's story, uh, repost his video on X and drop your email to my email. And we're not going to let them move the Overton window because Glenn Beck is one of the most brilliant broadcasters alive at this moment and a very, very critically important voice in the conservative movement and in our country. Uh, 64% of Americans say they will not vote for Trump in the 2024 election. That is what you would think if you opened up X right now. That is what you would think if you opened up Almost any news outlet right now, they're they're blasting that as a headline based on a new poll that's out. I'm going to bring up this article from the Associated Press. Of course, it's from the Associated Press, right? A formerly reputable organization that has devolved. So this is an AP poll, and it's being taken wildly out of context. The reason that we're talking about this is because this, this little phrase that's trending, 64% of Americans say they will, not, they will not vote for Trump, that's not true. What this poll actually says, if you open it up, if you read it yourself, which we have to do now, don't we? Because no one, no one portrays what they're talking about accurately. This is what the poll actually says. Most Republicans, 74%, say they would support him, meaning Donald Trump, in November of 2024, but 53% of Americans say they would definitely not support him if he is the nominee. Another 11% say they would probably not support him in November of 2024. So if that's not math, that's particularly difficult. 53% plus 11 would be 64%, but 64% of Americans did not say definitively that they would not vote for Donald Trump. 53% of Americans might've said that, but those 11% just said that they probably wouldn't support him. That is not the same. 11% is a huge margin. And what, what the Associated Press is trying to do is they're trying to portray it as in the vast majority of Americans hate Donald Trump and would never cast their vote. But that's not what their poll showed. In fact, if you scroll down a little bit further, these numbers are not terribly different than the numbers about Joe Biden. Listen to this. The Associated Press writes, just 43% of Americans say they would definitely not support Biden in a general election with another 11% saying they probably wouldn't. So isn't that funny how that's portrayed totally differently? That they use the word just as in only 43% say they would definitely not support him while 53% say they definitely wouldn't support Trump. That's not terribly different, especially given that these opinion polls almost never play out the way that they are portrayed. They never play out in elections the way they are portrayed now. But if you wanted to portray this the same way, then you would say that 54% of Americans would not vote for Joe Biden in a general election. But of course, they don't portray it like that. They want the other phrase about Trump trending, and they don't want you to know any of the context. None at all. A Republican congressman attacked a Christian for a basic Christian belief on X. It was a very weird situation. I actually assumed when I first saw this that it was a Democrat politician because it was such an outlandish, bad take. Um, And I'm going to read this to you in just a second. But first, I want to talk to you about cozy earth sheets. You guys know I love my cozy earth sheets. I have them on my bed at my house right now. I love them. And I know you'll love them too. Because 
Summer used to mean that I was always kicking off the sheets every night to try to stay cool. Uh, even though we have air conditioning, it just, you can still tell it's summer, you're still warm. But that all changed when I discovered Cozy Earth Bedding. I now sleep comfortably even on hot, sticky nights, and you can too. Simply swap out your current sheets for soft, breathable, temperature-regulating sheets. And if you don't agree that you're sleeping cooler and more comfortably this summer, they will refund your purchase price, plus shipping, no questions asked, and you get to 100 nights to try them out. That's right, 100 nights. Sleep on them, wash them, try them out. How can Cozy Earth make such a guarantee? They are that confident in their product. For a limited time, you can save up to 40% on Cozy Earth. Go to CozyEarth.com. Use my promo code Liz40 at checkout to save up to 40% right now. Try them out for 100 nights. If you don't sleep cooler, send them back for a full refund. That's CozyEarth.com, promo code Liz40. CozyEarth.com, promo code Liz40. Republican Congressman Max Miller, he represents the 7th District of Ohio, created a real ruckus on X because he responded to a woman's tweet about her Christian beliefs. I'm going to bring this up on the screen so that we all can read this. This is this this woman named Lizzie Marback is a former um, is is formerly associated with the Ohio Republican Party, formerly associated with the RNC and the Trump campaign. Maybe they know each other. I don't know if they know each other or not. But this is what she tweeted or what she posted on X. I should say. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to break that habit saying tweeting in Twitter. I'm going to have to get like a swear jar. And every time I say tweet, every time I say Twitter instead of X, I'm going to have to donate something to the cause. Anyway, Lizzie Marbach said, there is no hope for any of us outside of having faith in Jesus Christ alone. Now you might be thinking, okay, Liz, where's the controversial part? Are we getting to the good juicy part? That's it, guys. That's it. She said, there's no hope for any of us outside of having faith in Jesus Christ alone. To which... I, and I'm sure many of you, I know everyone who watches and listens to this show, not Christian, not necessarily religious, but a lot of us are. And I think we would say, amen, that's, that's correct. There's no hope for any of us outside of having faith in Jesus Christ alone. But Congressman Miller, quote, uh, quote posted, reposted, oh, I don't know what you call a quote, a quote tweet now on this new, on new X. Anyway, he said, this is one of the most bigoted tweets I've ever seen. Delete it, Lizzie. Religious freedom in the United States applies to every religion. You have gone too far. This is one of the most bigoted tweets I've ever seen, he said. I saw that. I thought maybe he was joking. I, my first inclination was I didn't know who this congressman was. I thought he was a Democrat. I thought that this was typical Democrats telling you that as a Christian, you're a bigoted, hateful, xenophobic, whatever, transphobe. And I thought, oh, okay, typical Democrat. And I clicked on it and I was like, what? A Republican? Do you not understand anything? Do you not understand religion? Do you not understand religious freedom? The idea of religion is dogma, meaning that you believe the dogma, the theology of your religion, and that means that other beliefs of other religions are excluded from your belief system. Religious freedom only applies to forcing other people to comply with your beliefs. So Lizzie Marbach stating that there's no hope for any of us outside of having faith in Jesus Christ alone is a very fundamental, very non-controversial, very, when I say mundane, I mean it's so obvious tenet of Christianity. This is the, the basis of Christianity. Of course she believes this. And if she didn't believe that, if she, if she thought like, well, there's hope for us, um, there's hope for us also in Buddha, or there's hope for us in yoga, or there's hope for us in Satanism, then she wouldn't be Christian. She wouldn't actually be a practicing Christian if she didn't adhere to the doctrine of her religion. So that's sort of the first point. The second point is just religious freedom. Religious freedom does not mean that you have to acknowledge that other religions might be as correct as yours. That defeats the purpose of religion. And I'm sitting here, I have so many friends of other religions. I have friends who are agnostic. I have friends who are atheist. I have friends who are Jewish. I have friends who are Muslim. I myself am a Christian, a Catholic Christian. I have Protestant friends and evangelical friends. And I think that some of their beliefs, each and every one of those people, whether it's family or friends, I think some of their beliefs are incorrect. I think some of their beliefs, the ones that contradict my Catholic Christian beliefs, I think are wrong. That doesn't make me a bigot. It makes me a practicing member of Catholicism. So he obviously got a ton of backlash. This post on X uh, got almost 10 million views on it. He issued, I, I don't even want to call it an apology because it's a, a very pseudo apology. He said, I posted something earlier that conveyed a message I did not intend. I will not try to hide my mistake or run for it. 
run from it, I sincerely apologize to Lizzie and to everyone who read my post. I don't really understand what that means. Like, do you understand that it's not a bigoted post or are you just, are you just saying that because you got a ton of backlash? Like, what message did you intend to convey? You didn't apologize for the wrong that you committed because you didn't really acknowledge that you committed any wrong. You just said that it was misinterpreted. This is, this is, listen, I'm all about accepting apologies. I'm all about redemption. But one of the core tenets of an apology is actually taking responsibility for your action, being contrite about your action, recognizing the wrongness of what you did. And one of my pet peeves is people who apologize for something by telling you that you misinterpreted what they said. Like, I'm sorry if you misunderstood. I'm sorry if you didn't, if my words weren't clear enough for you to understand. Like, I posted something that conveyed a message I did not intend. Hmm, I don't know about that. Really weird that this guy's a Republican. Again, I'm all about redemption, but I will say, if you have this lack of understanding about religion, this kind of disrespect for Christians, and a complete lack of understanding of what religious freedom means, you're probably not suited to be working in Congress. I'm sorry if that sounds harsh, but if we want to have a Congress that's actually fighting for us, representatives that are representing us, we need smarter people than this in Congress. And by the way, fun fact, this might be the only time in history that I've ever agreed with Ilhan Omar. The only time. I generally think Ilhan Omar is a very bad person, but she was correct on this. She responded to Max Miller and said, no, stating the core beliefs or principles of your faith isn't bigoted as Lizzie did. It's religious freedom and no one should be scolded for that. It's also wrong to speak about religious freedom while simultaneously harassing people who freely express their beliefs. Gives me a little bit of pain. I'm not gonna lie to you. To say the words, I agree with Ilhan Omar. Oh, it's a bitter pill, a bitter pill. Even a broken clock is right twice a day and that must be what happened here with Ilhan Omar. All right, Target has experienced the first drop in sales that they have had in the past six years. This is thanks to us and our boycott. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. But first I wanna talk to you about Black Forest. If you're watching my show right now, then you know all about the attack on masculinity that our men have been facing for the past 10 years or so. Our culture's been praising the feminization of men. It's all part of their plan. Weak men and weak people are easier to control. So do as we say, not as we do, and don't ask questions. If you speak out, well, you're a homophobe, you're a sexist, you're a misogynist. And the sad part is, it's kind of working. Did you know testosterone levels have been declining for decades? So too has grip strength and other measurable counts, the baby making kind of counts. This research and data is all published online with the National Library of Medicine. The reason for this is we are bombarded with chemicals, with unhealthy foods and with a backwards mainstream culture. But our new sponsor, Black Forest, is on a mission to help change this. Of course, healthy activities like lifting weights and getting high quality sleep will help tremendously. But Black Forest has another solution on top of this. Black Forest Turkesterone. Black Forest Turkesterone is a natural anabolic compound that supports muscle growth, improves endurance, and increases strength, lean muscle mass, and aids in fat loss. It's basically like steroids without the nasty side effects. So gentlemen, embrace your strength. Let Black Forest help you get there. Go to blackforestsupplements.com. That's blackforestsupplements.com. If you use my promo code LIZ10 at checkout, you can get a 10% discount. Go to blackforestsupplements.com. So for the first time in six years, Target has seen a dip in their overall sales. This is from CNN, believe it or not, this article. The title is Pride Month Backlash Hurt Target Sales. They fell for the first time in six years. It reads, Target's quarterly sales fell for the first time in six years as consumers pulled back on discretionary goods and fierce right-wing backlash to Target's Pride Month collection took a toll on the brand. I will take it. I will absolutely take being called fierce right-wing backlash when it comes to Satanists trying to... In CNN says Target sales at stores open for at least one year dropped 5.4% last quarter, including a 10.5% drop online. By the way, only like half of that online is from me because I have not bought a single thing from Target since they launched their Satanist transgender line. Children, not a single thing. And probably only like 5% of their total online sales work for me. The company also cut its annual sales forecast. Target's foot traffic dropped 4.8% last quarter, likely a function of a mix that skews too discretionary, as well as the pride merchandise issues. This is from an analyst named Michael Baker. I like how they're pretending that it's partially due to consumer discretionary spending when we all know exactly what it's from. It's because of us, and this is something we should be very proud of. We should be extremely proud of 
using the power of our purse, our voice as a consumer to tell corporations, not just woke corporations, but woke corporations so evil that they hire a Satanist to design to design merchandise for your babies and your toddlers and your little children, to tell them to get lost, that we're not gonna, we're not gonna tolerate it anymore, that enough is enough, we are done with evil Marxists coming after our children and we won't give another dime to your establishment until you change your ways. This is, I'm incredibly proud, this, this year, first with Bud Light and now with Target, I'm incredibly proud of how much fear we are putting in the hearts of these corporations that before, just thought that we'd go about our merry way because conservative boycotts never stuck and they, they could do whatever they want in pursuit of their ESG ratings. Well, not anymore. Now, if they choose wokeness, they are going to suffer the serious financial consequences. I haven't bought a single thing. I probably bought stuff from Target like once a week. Like there were Target packages coming to my house all the time, all the time. It was a constant conversation of my husband being like, Liz, did you buy something else from Target? looking at the credit card bill and me being like, uh, yep, I sure did. Not a single thing. I will never go back there until they apologize. It doesn't even matter if they pull those, those, that merchandise from the front of the store, they move it to the back of the store. You can't wash this away. You can't brush this under the rug. Until you change your ways, I will never spend another penny at the store. And clearly I'm not the only one. We have, we have bonded together to send Target a message and it has been extremely effective. All right. We have time for one more random thing from the internet. This is heartwarming. This is a paralyzed woman who was carried up 13 floors in her apartment building. Let's take a look. That just warmed my heart, absolutely warmed my heart. Are we there yet? Look Almost. at them go. How many flights? Oh, oh God. Uh, 13? I like this how good nature they are too, that they're like, gonna film the whole thing. You. <laughs> I'm not choking you. They said, this is why we train. Yeah, <laughs> Johnny back. That actually is very impressive to carry another person Johnny, up that many flights that of stairs. It's not just a kind thing to do, it's a physically impressive thing to do. I love that. I love that so much. Guys, thank you for watching. Make sure you drop your email to me for our email newsletter to make sure that we're always in touch, that big tech, no matter how much censorship they try to leverage against us that they cannot cut us off from each other. Go to lizwheeler.com slash email, drop me your email, and I will shoot you a message to make sure that we are always in touch no matter what the censorship overlords are trying to do to us. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for listening. I'm Liz Wheeler. This is The Liz Wheeler Show. Ready, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.